Now, this film is announced after Hum Kisi Se Kam Nahi, which is a 77 release. It's a big, big blockbuster hit, Hum Kisi Se Kam Nahi. And see, this is the thing again that, you know, uh, we have taken a certain one-dimensional account of decades. So, 50s, we look at Nehruvian socialism and nation-building narratives and we celebrate the cinema of Mehboob Khan and V. Shantaram and Guru Dutt. And that entire film is Stan School from which Nasir Hussain emerges and Subodh Mukherjee emerges and, you know, the people who own the cinema of the 60s have been ignored and something similar happens in the 70s also uh, and, and this was one of the insights that I've given in the book that if you look at the decade of the 70s which is essentially we remember it as Mr. Bachchan's decade and the Salim Javed you know giving shape to this angry young man persona um, all the great directors of Hindi cinema who debut around 57 whether it's Raj Khosla in 55 whether it's Vijay Anand in 57 whether it is mm -hmm. Yash Chopra in 59 with Dhul Kapoor Manmohan Desai there's Pramod Chakravarti, they're all of them go to the when they come into the 70s, they all of them give turn to Mr. Bachchan either to Rishikesh Mukherjee, all of them turn to Mr. Bachchan either to give him his best films or uh, to rescue their own sagging careers, they turn to Mr. Bachchan. The one man who does not turn to Mr. Bachchan is Nasir Saab. And look at the three films he makes in the 70s. In 1971, he makes Karwa which is a huge hit. In 73, he makes Yadun Ki Bharat, which I believe um, celebrated 100 weeks at Star Talkies in Chennai. Okay, and then there was Hum Kisi Se Kam Nahi in 77. And all these three films are celebrating song and dance and music, which is, diff it's almost the anti-Bachchan anti school of cinema. Because in the Bachchan films, the Salim Javed films, as you know it, music and romance is not there. It's in Nasir Hussain's film. Now, I, what I understood is you were not very keen on just following your father's footsteps, but when you decided to, what was the best advice he gave you? Um, it was not that I was not too keen. I, was, uh, I wasn't interested in films at all. And when you mentioned that I assisted in an hour assisted, I was a useless assistant. <laughs> I should have been sacked on day one. Amir was a brilliant assistant. And I was like, I think this is the story of Jojita, one good son and one bad. <laughs> so that's where it comes from. So Amir is the, the good son and the ah, bad son. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but really, uh, but, but that's the thing. Uh, uh, actually, my dad didn't give me any advice. But I uh, somehow I felt that, uh, see, for me, I was... Uh, I was a dropout, and I had you know, done many uh, wasteful things. <laughs> so for me, it was to get to redeem myself in his eyes. It was more about that. And uh, so I was quietly working on a, on a video film, uh, just to test myself, because I had video equipment. In those days, nobody had it, but you could actually edit it. And I shot a one hour, 40 minute film, which I had written, which was supposed to be a 20 minute film. It became a one hour, 40 minute film. <laughs> two songs and on background. It was like a proper film. And Daddy saw it later. And that gave him the confidence that I could possibly direct. Otherwise, he would have never given me the help for Amir's launch film. <laughs> so, yeah, I think he just had, I just felt that he had uh, intrinsic faith in, in me. And he didn't, he didn't, uh, we used to argue a lot. So, the question of advice didn't come in, you know. I, 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 didn't, I don't take advice easily. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you've forgotten one thing. Uh, Right through when Mansoor was, you know, in school and he came out of school, after he came out of school and decided to go to IIT, he was in Bombay IIT, <coughs> to engineering partner. So whenever anyone used to ask Mansoor, hey, you're becoming an engineer, this, that, he went to IIT, then he went to MIT. Chajan would always say, Inko jo karna karne do, ghoom phir ko yahi aana. He can go where he wants, ultimately wo yahi aaya. And that's exactly what happened. That's true. When I was that. leaving for US, uh, Daddy asked me, ke, Maine ya dukan khol ke rakhi hai. it's ready made, you know, why on earth do you want to go there, you know. So for me at that time, it was like, I mean, like, now making films is a very respectable, where you know, everybody aspires. For me, it was like, oh, come on, yeah. I mean, how can you even suggest that? <laughs> I looked down upon it. To, to, to add to that, I mean, uh, when uh, we used to go as kids, I mean, we didn't know he was famous and all, but we used to criticize him a lot. So we used to go and watch his films, and after the trial, Daddy would say, "So how did it 
तो एट लीस्ट आज मैम आई डोंट नो वेदर नुजर डज तो आई वैट से कम ऑन डैट उसमें ये हो जाता है फिर वो कोइंसिडेंस से वहाँ मिल जाते हैं फिर ये कोइंसिडेंस हो जाता है फिर वो ऐसा हो जाता है फिर इसमें ये ऐसा है तो आई टू क्रिटिसाइज द होल थिंग एंड कीप लिसनिंग टू मी क्वाइटली एट दी एंड ऑफ इट इट्स अच्छा लेकिन मजा आया कि नहीं That was his. That was actually his ground principle. I mean, you can say all this stuff, but if you enjoy the film, that's actually yeah. his films. I, you know, as a kid when I was used to watch his films, I, used to, I remember in Jashan's films, I used to feel I'm on a picnic. It's nice. We're going outdoor. We're going to play. We're going to play. You know, handsome-looking people. There's romance. There's comedy. He's constantly making you laugh. It's like a. His film used to be like a breezy summer holiday, a breezy picnic. You know, all his films had that quality. and they were very modern films you know i mean in his films the the, the female characters were very modern uh, surprisingly so i mean you know at that time it was very unusual to see ke zina tamar is having a wine glass in her hand and all of that you know it was his his smoking his 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 uh, female characters were you know very modern and uh, so that was amazing to see and and if i can add over here um, <clears throat> that song sequence which is there in the film aaja aaja you know uh, i i really looked at a lot of films you will be hard pressed to find a film before this tisri manzil where someone at asha ji's level who's an a list hero and i think 65 66 are asha ji's best years in terms of her commercial box office success an a list hero in dancing in the club space uh, with a you know a western western clothes western sensibility to her because that space was essentially for the van for the mall but uh, nasir hussain and vijay anand they they, they didn't go by this uh, you know uh, boxing characters into female characters into those spaces for them their heroines and i think this is more in nasir hussain's case in fact in asha ji's uh, first film as lead heroine which was dil leke dekho she's introduced uh, uh, in, in the film if she remembers this uh, she's uh, introduced uh, dancing to an american song and she says that you know uh, me and my friends have formed the rock and roll club over here so that kind of a western modern woman uh, nasir saab had already started introducing in dil de ke dekho which i think is nasir saab's most uh, important film because it sets the main frame for what he's going to do in his later films so sure, she would write us when nasir saab made his first film after having written lots of others we mostly many with him saab um how old was he when he did tum sandhi dekha i think he was about 30 31 26 is when the, the birth date is not uh, you know we, we we couldn't we've said now 1926 is 30 31 because actually quite often when we think about people of the past we think of them as old men somehow yes and actually you see their work and you see what they do whether it was goldie or whether it was nasir saab or whether Raji, it was raji raji made his first one at 21 even yeah, honestly extraordinary directed his first one you know very i mean guru that was 27 so no later but still they have made they were very young yeah. and they had a very kind of romantic idea of life was he a romantic man in real life who said has to answer yes <laughs> you know he um i'd say he was uh he wasn't the kind of uh, guy to to write poetry or flowers for his wife or anything like that but you know i was just think i was i was looking at these things again i have to say and i was pointing out to myself uh, a lot of the things written into shamiankar's character which seemed to me so much my dad give us some examples uh you know uh, I'm, i'm trying to remember the scene uh, some of some of the, even the mannerisms of the the way you know no never the mix up you know the attitude that that i mean <laughs> that is to talk like that so uh, I, i'm not sure how this came about did he write it in is this something because shami uncle and he was such um, you know good friends that uh, He picked it up unconsciously. I'm not sure, or who picked it up from who. <laughs> But he was he was al- always a very uh, I I saw him as a very passionate man, my dad, and very youthful. I mean, the very fact is that it's yeah. all about young people. Yes, yeah. 
You know, people talk a lot about, you know, the Nasser Sabs films were show people going away on a holiday and this big romance starts on a holiday. But from on, on a holiday, the, also the very important thing is you're away from your family. <laughs> and that gives you freedom. And that freedom allows you to develop personality. And all his films are about people going away also from the family. It wasn't just the picnic. It was, they were not under any authority. They were not answerable. I also wanted to know, Amir should be able to tell us, uh, the relationship between Shami Kapoor and Nasir Saab. Obviously, you as an actor will know that, are you always acting to please the director? And was that the case? Am in, I always acting to please in, the director? In other words, you've got to have a mirror somewhere. Uh, no, I'm definitely acting to please the director. Uh, because, you know, I, I believe that filmmaking is one man's vision and that is the director. The director is narrating the film, and if I'm not able to satisfy him or do what he wants, then, you know, I mean, that's my main goal. Uh, but regarding Cheshiran and Shami Uncle, uh, you know, Shami Uncle, in, his, in the start of his career, had done, I think, seven, eight films which had not done very well. He was playing characters which were very tragic, and, you know. So the Shami Uncle that we grew up knowing, uh, I discovered later was actually uh, in Tumsa Nereka, the character that Shami Uncle plays. So that's the character that Nasir Saab wrote actually for Dev Saab, because Dev Saab is, is, is whom he had offered the film to, because he had done Paying Guest, he had done Munim Ji. And let me go slightly back. So when Nasir Saab first came to Bombay, he was a struggling writer. For very long, he used to ghost write. So there were very popular writers who had more work than they could handle, so they would give their work to you know, people like Jajan, who was you know struggling writer, he needed the money, so he would do ghost writing. So he would write but not get the credit for the scenes and the, for the films. And then slowly his talent started getting recognized and he you know, got to work individually as himself. And he wrote dialogues for uh, Paying Guest, Munim Ji, etc. And then finally he wrote the script of Tumsani Dekha. And he told the producer that, uh, I think it was Tola Ram Jalan, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. He told Tola Ram Ji that this story that I have written, I will give you when you will direct me. So I want to direct now. And that's how Tumsani Dekha, he got to direct. And he got to direct, I mean, Tulram Jalan finally gradually said, okay, yaar, abhi script hai and I want the script, so I'll allow you to direct. But apparently, he got a really shoestring budget, and uh, he told me that I got outdoor for three days. Tulram Jalan said, I got outdoor for three days for outdoor. And where is outdoor? Gorbandar Road. Yeah. <laughs> Gorbandar Road, which is, you know, not this linking road, Gorbandar Road. Slightly ahead, there's another Gorbandar Road. So that was his slightly out of Mumbai. That's where he got the outdoor, ke haan, outdoor Gorban the road pe kar ke ho. So somehow he used to manage and make the film, you know, and uh, and that character that we know of Shammi Uncle, which, you know, is the image that we carry in our heads of Shammi Uncle, which is a debonair, charming guy, is actually the image that Nasir Sahib had written, which, which really, be, you know, became hand in glove with Shammi Uncle's personality. And for the first time, Shammi Uncle actually performed in that way. And I remember Jajaran Jajan telling me that when Tumsani Dekha finally released, uh, one of the things I remember is that he, when he shot that song, Tumsani Dekha, that one, uh, apparently he had used a lot of cuts, you know. And at that time, you know, films were not cut so fast. So at the end of the song, he's gone into multiple cuts and, you know, small, small cuts of 12 frames. And so when Tularam Jalan saw the edit, he was like, are you mad? What is Chakkar Araya? I don't want to see it. So, the editor and Tolaram Jalan were both very keen that that song should be cut differently. But Chajan said, no, 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 this, I don't want you to touch this. And he stuck to his guns. And when uh, the film was about to release, Tolaram Jalan was like, you know, anyway, this film is gone. Because Shambi Ankel had not had any successes until then. And uh, I think Nas was a theatre where the premiere Nas was. Cinema. Nas Cinema. And I remember uh, they had a premiere on the day of the release. So, if it was a Friday... Friday evening was a special show when the stall was, tickets were sold in the stall and the invitees were in the balcony. And when the film began, Shambi uncle and uh, Geeta auntie and uh, Chachan and Chachiyan had come together in Shambi uncle's car. And uh, they had come to the show and, and he said that we sat in the balcony and the film began. And, you know, suddenly there were noises from the stall which were coming. And Shambi uncle kept asking Jajaran, are they going the film? Are they going the film? 
बिकॉज ही वो ही वॉज सो यूज टू हिस फिल्म नॉट बींग लाइक यू नो ही कुन अंडरस्टैंड कि वो अच्छी लग रही बुरी लग रही है किच कर गए तो जनरल सर नहीं नहीं रहे क्लैपिंग दे लेते हैं जॉइंग द फिल्म सो ही कुन बिलीव इट ही कैट आस्किंग जनरल सर ये हंस रहे हैं कि रो रहे हैं मतलब क्या हो रहा है and that i mean the film was very loved and that first show itself became huge and jaran says that that day shammi uncle from being someone who were un- you know until then had not really become successful that day he became a star because jaran said when i came out of the theater i couldn't find shammi anywhere <laughs> and chashiyan and him had to go home in a tanga because they had come with <laughs> shammi uncle in the car so <laughs> he said ke wo to itna mob ho gaya wo pata nahi yahan se wahan sab you know it was he was out of he couldn't even reach him and uh, you know as usual the writers and directors are unrecognized so unko dhakke ke pade finally it is his first film no one who he was also so he said ki chashiyan and i were happy ki chalo logo film pasand aa rahi hai they got into tanga and then they went how lovely yeah. how lovely to have grown up and knowing all this i think i'm envious of you yeah. <laughs> but i want to say something about uh, the the writing that he the, uh, that uh, nasir sahab had in terms of devan and the big guest and so on were very playful characters especially big guest and it seemed that the marriage of this playfulness which is in words went into the physicality of the playfulness which is shamik kapoor yeah. so he got you know you when people talk i mean here there must be people very interested in world cinema and they always say like a man like uh, trufo many of you must have seen through for his films he had his alter ego was a young actor called Jean Pierre Leo and in a funny way i think shami kapoor yeah, became yeah. the alter ego of nasir sir would you the agree one, the one actor who really brought tishran's writing yes. to the to bloom fully he could render it oh, yeah. Way, uh, yeah yeah shami uncle really he rendered you know the the, way the that would have yeah, and, imagined it. and i just want to add again here to <coughs> what you've said in fact your write up on shami ji also says is that that physicality was a very important part of his persona and and that's that physicality comes out in the characters that nasir sahab wrote so for me tc manzil is also uh, an important film from these two aspects one is that that physicality that manic energy which shami kapoor emotes uh, or is known for uh, tc manzil becomes a passing of the baton you know in a sense that uh, nasir sahab the actually if you look at his filmography he's not someone like a shakti samant or a, a manmohan desai who are dependent on one hero like bachchan uh, with manmohan desai or shakti samant and shammi kapoor who <laughs> six films nasir hussain does two films with shammi kapoor he does two films with rishi kapoor he does one film only one film with shashi kapoor with jitendra with rajesh khanna with joy mukherjee dev sahab with dev sahab one film so yeah, joy mukherjee yes with joy mukherjee <laughs> fir wahi dilaya so basically that passing of the baton happens in uh, tisri manzil where that manic energy which shammi kapoor is exuding then gets trans uh, transmitted to rd burman's music and that's a turning point in nasir hussain's filmography because from tisri manzil onwards and this was something that i discussed with amir i think particularly that he he suddenly realizes that music is my forte uh, it's my strongest suit so how can i integrate this music more organically into my narrative so tisri manzil is about a drama it, it's about a drama figure at the core of the narrative okay and there's this murder mystery playing around him okay then you have a pyar ka mausam yaadon ki barat and hum kisi se kam nahi where reunion happens through music in one place it's between the brothers in one place it's between the father mother and the and the son which is pyar ka mausam and in hum kisi se kam nahi it is those two childhood sweethearts who are reunited by kya hua tera wada i don't know how many of you have seen these films and whether all of this makes sense yes. yeah you all have yes. oh wow that great and karva is about these itinerant banjaras and therefore music is a very important part of the banjara community so you know that's why tisri manzil is a very important film even from nasir sahab i will say my favorite moment in nasir sahab's film is a song and it's from tum sa nahi dekha and is chuni wale samne aa i think i can watch it as often as i would watch the opening of uh, the arrival of harry lime in the third man it is stunning it's just soft light and Also, we must say that how influenced Nasir Sabu with Elvis Presley. And, and, and what about Nusrat? Do you feel that he was influenced? Yes, definitely. Uh, not just Elvis Presley, the Beatles, uh, all of these, uh, the early, early uh, music stars. Uh, music stars. The sixties. 
most definitely. And I think, uh, again, the physicality of Elvis Presley was quite different from all the other stars, uh, uh, the music stars of the time. And I'm, I'm wondering if anybody else sees a link between that and... Uh, I think Emu Yeah. I think Elvis Presley was copying Chamiyan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had asked Ashamwi uh, to pull something interesting you know, and he could see it from Tumsan Hideka. I said that when he was in the song sequence, it was very fascinating to me uh, where the cuts took place in the song. So he said to me, oh, because it was very simple, because when I knew they should cut on the beat, I would jump out of the frame. I wasn't there. So therefore, they had to cut. So I thought this was brilliant. And if you see his shots, he's kind of flopping out, a little bit like I did the act with my chair, you know, and he disappears. So uh, um, unbelievable, that confidence of the edits. And he's always said, Shami Kapoor has always said that he was not a good dancer. But that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> You know, uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time with Shammi Uncle, and he, he, you know, when I got to know him properly and, and you know, spent, was spending a lot of time with him, by then he was a very uh, loving, warm, you know, person. But he told me that, you know, in my youth I was really British. And, uh, he would put them to shame. <laughs> That's how British he was. And he's told me a lot of stories which I'm not going to repeat over here. <laughs> but, uh, so I can imagine him, you know, I mean, the, the combination of him at his, you know, peak of Bratiness with Cheshiran and the two of them, you know, working together. Yeah, you know, I just want to say something about that, you know, uh, because we're talking so much about Shami Ankal and, and Dad. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of what, what my dad was as a character inside, but um, which he wrote, but he didn't do himself physically. I, I think that he saw uh, that Shami, Shami uncle had that. So for instance, every, uh, well not every evening, uh, quite often when Shami, uh, Shami uncle came over home, I remember in the evenings, and uh, this, this used to be very late and I, I used to be uh, very small and wanting to go to sleep, but, too excited to go to sleep because there are all the grown-ups are there and playing all this exciting music. I don't know if you remember this, but Dad would put the music on, but he wouldn't dance. Dad, Shami Angal was the one who was dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and this would be in, in that little bedroom of ours, mm -hmm. parents' bedroom, mm -hmm. uh, because just next door is my dad's mom and aunts and all of that, and you know, uh, couldn't make too much noise also. <laughs> but this is what he used to be doing. In, um, so my, uh, I, I saw Dad as uh, providing the uh, the sound and the music and, and the rhythm, really. Yeah. But uh, it it was not he. He was never the one who uh, Person, had, personified. Yes. But I, I think you've forgotten one night when we <laughs> didn't dance long. But one night he played a, there was a Punjabi folk song. You remember that? Yeah? And it was such an appealing song that all of us were dancing. No, not that. That was hers? Acha, acha, acha. I didn't know whose it was. Yeah, but I, I remember him dancing and really enjoying that song. And it was, and it was a frothy uh, folk song, Punjabi folk song. So it's not that he couldn't dance. He just... No, no, yeah, I, I have seen him dancing. He, he didn't do it very well. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say he was an introvert or extrovert? He was an extrovert. He was an extrovert. He would hold, uh, like in a party uh, or in a, in a sitting, he would be the center of, you know, reparties. But with humor, his words. Narrative, yeah. With his words. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about you know, Mansur. He was a very charming character. Very charming. He had, you know, his, he had very intense eyes. And he, he was a very winning personality. But very funny. He was very, very funny. We talked a lot about Mansoor's work and, of course, Amir's. Uh, Nusa, did he ever guide you in terms of what you should do in life? Did he think you should work in films? Never. <laughs> do you remember, we were the generation that didn't think it was a good thing to work in films, and especially women. 
So there was no question about me doing anything with the movies. Uh, it would never have occurred to my father and it didn't occur to me. Uh, so I did my, um, I, I, I went to school, I went to college and I, um, at a certain point like Mansoor, I came back to the films, but just very minimally uh, at the time of uh, QSQT. So, so Nuzat, Mansoor, me and Jajan, the four of us worked on that script. And so Nuzat was involved in the writing of a number of scripts, including Rakh, by the way. <laughs> Ask your question. Who's laughing? That's our family. Okay. But, uh, I know the inside joke. So, yeah, but that was just a little bit. Uh, Did you argue about the language and dialogue? <laughs> on the mic, on the mic. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, for QSQD, we all worked together. Amir and Nuzat's main job was to resolve the, the fight, conflict. The conflict between my dad and me. <laughs> Actually, what happened, I'll tell you, QSQD was being directed by Chishan. And Mansoor was writing Jojita at that time, as his first film. So then at one point when the script was complete, Jajan fell ill and he had to go through an operation and all, bypass. So he was not in a position to direct the film. You know, he had to, he couldn't uh, take the strain of directing a film so quickly after the operation. So he told Mansoor ke bhai, tum apne script ke saath struggle kar rahe ho, hamari ready hai, tum sun lo, agar achhi lage, to tum ye bana lo pehle. So Mansoor said, okay, he heard the script and he said, yeah, I, I like it and I want to do it. Uh, but I might need a few changes in the script. And then became a, began a uh, writing, you know, part where we were correcting, correcting the rewriting part, in which the few things that Mansoor wanted to change was actually 80% of the whole script. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, while the story remained the same, but, uh, and I remember that when Mansoor was not the director, and Nuzat and I was working with Jajana, Nuzat and I would keep fighting with him about, you know, about the way that we, we because we were think we were coming from a different generation and we were thinking different, <laughs> and we kept uh, fighting with him. But he was a director, so ultimately Nuzda and I used to give in. Okay, now you know he's not listening to us, and he obviously knows what he wants, and he's a director, so we would write as per his requirement and guidance. When Mansoor came in, we were like, yes, <laughs> we said we, we had, so the three of us used yeah, to be against him. <laughs> So, Jajan used to be like, you're doing wrong, you don't know what you're doing, you're crazy, you're crazy. So, he used to get really upset with us. But then, but then he would, you know, he went along. Because now he also realized that now the director is Mansoor and we have to all work towards, you know, Mansoor's yeah, requirement. But his, but his guidance, I mean, at that time when we, we would argue, I mean, I had vague ideas in my mind. Like, I, like, this scene shouldn't be like this. So, he would say, like, but what should it be like? You can't just say, you know, this is so boring, or this is that. And I'd come up with quite wacko ideas. You know. uh, one of one of the one of the things which was an absolute delight to get to know uh, when I was interviewing them. Uh, Nasir Hussain is that we remember him now for fun, shorty, song, dance, music, romance. But he was a man of letters. So he calls them one day. Apparently, this is the story that they told me that he calls them one day and he says, "Look, I think I've got the right title. Just hear me out. Be patient." Give it a, just listen to it, digest it for a minute. And they're, they're obviously, they you know, uh, edgy and they're wondering what he's going to say. And he says, Kayamat se Kayamat tak. And as Mansoor said, he said, I don't know why, but I just love the title. Mm. And just to wet it, he called up Majru Saab. You know, again, that mental literary wavelength. And Majru Saab apparently gave his, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he said, yeah, that's a fine title. But you have to appreciate the fact that, you know, there can't be a more beautiful translation, I mean, title for the film. Because Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak basically means that the film begins with this violent death which is with the death of uh, the, the, uh, the guy that uh, Dilip Tahil shoots and it ends with the murder, uh, the you deaths of these same people. No, I, I mean that's interesting but uh, but it's also funny that while my dad, I often thought about this, that while he, he suggested Kayamat Sir Kayamat Tak, I don't think they had gone started shooting yet. Uh, they no. They hadn't no, gone no, for shooting. No. So, uh, uh, in my dad's mind, uh, it when you say Kayamat Sir Kayamat Tak, it means you're actually expecting a sad end. Right. So though he thought of the title, but he was not in favor of a sad end. In favor sad of a sad end. end. Used, that used to be another bone of contention between us. Yes. Correct. Uh, but uh, once you had Actually, you know what? It, uh, now I'm remembering slightly. 
I remember that in English we used to say that uh, you know titles for this film should be something like see nafrat ke baare mein I used to always say ki yaar bahut hi matlab gaana type ka hai nafrat ke baare mein it sounds very too strange too obvious so one of the titles if you remember we used to discuss was from here to eternity isme aisa kuch feel hona chahiye from here to eternity and that is when yeah and that is when chashan said kayamat se kayamat tak yeah that makes sense tak and and from here and yeah. just on the other hand like mansoor told me this jojita bhai sikandar which is nasir saab produced and essentially wrote the dialogues for that film uh, mansoor used to give nasir saab a lot of the dialogues in english mm -hmm. am i right okay but again the beauty of the man that he's not just merely tra because translation as you know it's your translating cultures so intention yes so he gave him the title uh, that that it should be winner takes it all and so the winner takes it all with the winner takes it all and so beautifully he translates that into jojita vaisikan and i had one conversation when we were talking now about majroo sahab uh with majroo sahab and he said there were two very i'm sure he wasn't excluding everybody but he said they bahut sharif do shakhs hain is industry mein pehle to gurudev ji hain aur phir nasir sahab and they were obviously very close and great friends but you told me a wonderful story about how you were resistant to the song papa kehte hain you didn't want the word papa why was that uh, it sounded very tacky to me so uh, uh, and see actually it was very difficult for me uh, to work with majroo sahab after he is used to working with my dad who was a literature you know uh, uh, sort of urdu literature person and i am i i used to talk to him in english but he was so flexible majroo sahab was so flexible he said aap apne tarike se batayi you can explain to me in your words ki what is that boy saying or what is the girl saying and stuff like that i used to do things like that to isme uh, actually maine ye thought shayad di thi uh, roughly like that you know that this boy doesn't know what where he's going but is actually he's a romantic and his his yeah that which comes in the antra second antra so he came up with the line papa kehte hain you i didn't like it one bit you were cringing i was cringing you know but uh, everybody else liked it it's interesting line because i mean psychologically it really is seeking the approval of the dad <laughs> yeah you know which you said earlier on in the our conversation yeah i, I remember majroo sahab telling me you know the song was written it was recorded and it, you know it turned out rather well so we were sitting at my brother that day and majroo sahab telling me ke बेटा देखो गाना तो बड़ा अच्छा है अब तुम्हारे ऊपर है तो कैसे करो नो प्रेशर बेटा सुपर हिट गाना है तुमको करना है इन टर्म्स ऑफ व्हेन यू यू फ्रॉम बीइंग एन असिस्टेंट ही वाज 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 क्लियर क्लियर वांट वांट टू एक्टर नो ही 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 वाज 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 सी व्हाट दैट फॉर मी व्हेन आई आई वांटेड बी एन or jaja jaja and or abul jan to ever feel you know ke now it is our responsibility to launch army i didn't want them to ever feel that yeah. i didn't want to be a you know burden on them uh so i knew what by that time i wanted to act and i i was doing my own thing i used to go to fdi i used to do diploma films over there i was doing theater i did a film called holy you know which ketan had directed at the film institute So I was doing my own thing, but I never, ever, even by mistake, I used to not mention to Chajran or to Abhijan about me wanting to act, and you know, because I didn't want to even come close, close to that. So two things happened, and coincidentally, both these things happened with with a, a, a very famous couple of today. What happened is that I did a short film called Paranoia, which Aditya Bhattacharya had made. This is much before Ark. I'm talking of you know when I was I. Passed out of uh, school, tenth, and just before the first year college began in the holidays, I shot for this film called Paranoia, which was a forty-minute short film, entirely silent, meaning no dialogue, no music, nothing, not even a pen ka sound. Shh, as a girl, jaldi puri. So he had made that film, and uh, he made it as an experiment to learn about cinema, and you know he wanted to learn filmmaking, and so he asked me. I was in school with him. I was his classmate. So he said, "Okay, will you act in it?" and I said okay. I mean, sir, I need my, I need your help. I need another boy, something like you. Can I? So I said okay. So I was the actor on the film. I was also the production manager and the assistant director and the spot boy and everything. So basically, I was helping Aditya. And uh, the experience of doing that film actually got me interested in filmmaking. Until then, I wasn't. But I'm saying something else now. 
So the film got complete and he wanted to show it so he called Shabana ji to Dimple Theatre. And Shabana ji was the only person sitting at the theatre and watching the film. It was a silent film and it was pretty, you know, difficult to fathom what Aditya was trying to say. Usually it's difficult to fathom what he's trying to say. So the film was finished and Shabana ji is a very, you know, outspoken person. So Aditya's mother, Rinki auntie was next to her and Aditya was sitting behind them and I was sitting right at the back with my sister Nikhat was there. Now mind you, nobody in my house knows I've gone to shoot for this film. Because my dad will just kill me if he comes to know that I'm shooting for shooting. I didn't even tell Ammi. So I used to pretend I'm going for a hockey match early morning, Ammi is our hockey match. I'm going to take a hockey stick and I'm actually shooting. So then, Shabana ji was watching the film and she, she saw the film, she got up and said, I didn't understand the film, but who's that boy? So Rinki auntie said, oh, he's sitting behind. Tahir ka beta. So she said, where? And she turned around and uh, I got up, I said, hello ma'am. So Rinki auntie said, this is Tahir sahab son. Now Shavana, Shavana ji was working with my father at that time in a film called Khun Ki Pukar. The shooting was going on. She said, hey, you're Tahir sahab son. I must tell him you're a fantastic actor. I said, no, you can't tell him that. You can't tell him that, he'll kill me. <laughs> so she said, why? I said, no, no, you can't tell him that. So she said, but you're a fantastic actor, you should be acting. So I was so thrilled because I really look up to Shavana ji as an actress and when she said that I was like, wow, you know, like yeah, I felt so good that someone who I respect so much as an actor is telling me uh, that, that, that she's like, you're really amazing and you know, you have no idea how well you've done it. You really should act. So I was like, okay. And then I joined Trishan as a AD and I was, I remember it was towards the end of the shooting of Zabardast and we were in Faryaz Hotel which is in, we were shooting there in Khandala, Lonavla. And Javed Saab had come to work on Mr. India's script. And he was also working on the script of Arjun. So Shekhar was there, Javed Saab was there, Rahul Ravel was there. And uh, I was sitting in Nasir Saab's room doing some paperwork. And um, Javed Saab walked in to say hi to Nasir Saab. So they, they were meeting after a long time. They you know, were exchanging you know, whatever. And they were talking. And, catching up after a long time. And then finally, after about half an hour, Javid Saab told, uh, asked Tishan, who is that boy over there? I was sitting near the window. So he said, this is Tahir's son. So he says, what are you doing with him? He said, he's my assistant. So Javid Saab said, why are you assistant? So you should be a star. I was standing there, I was listening to everyone. What are you talking about? And uh, it's quite ironical that, you know, both Shavana and Javid Saab were together today. And it's quite ironical that, you know, both Javid Saab were together today individually noticed me at separate places and said the same thing. Even after that, I never had the courage to tell my uncle or my father that, yeah, Javed Saab is saying I'm a star on TV. So, I just completely ignored it. I didn't even want to bring it up. I was so frightened that, you know, he would feel that, yeah, I didn't ever want Chajanan to feel that, you know, Amir expects me to make a film for him. Now, I'll have to, you know, I didn't want that. I didn't want that. So, one day, I was with Chajanan and I used to be with him all the time. So we met someone he was meeting after many years and uh, he said, hello, how are you, this, that, they were catching up and then he said, uh, Amir, meet so-and-so, he's an old friend of mine and he said, uh, so-and-so, meet, this is my nephew Amir and he's the star of my next film. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's how I came to know that I'm going to be acting in this next film. And then a few days later, he called me and said, okay, listen, I think I want to make a film with you, it's going to be a love story and, and all of that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And no specific advice about acting? N no, no. So, so I'm saying all along, I always thought Trishan does not want me to be an actor. And, and it's actually he and Mansoor saw Holi at some point, mm -hmm. if you remember. And I think uh, at some point after that they felt maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and Nusaf, uh, what do you think uh, your father would have felt, both of you, about a book being written about him? It's a very interesting question yeah. because, uh, yeah, my dad was very uh, used to not getting awards, <laughs> you know, he, so he never got any Filmfare award, you know, or anything like that. And uh, all his accolades were not, you know, so I, I think he would be a little apprehensive about <laughs> so, 
somebody looking closely at his work. He said, look, film they're going to get. It's a, it's a, it's a tragedy that, I mean, I think his only Filmfare Award is jointly shared by all for best screenplay for Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak. There's not a single Filmfare Award given to him. We have to say Guru that same thing. Oh, you're kidding. He got it as a producer for Sai Bibi Ghulam. And Piyasa? And it was a Mahmoud that year. Mother oh, India was oh, the same India. year. So it, it awards basically mean nothing. That's what we can say. It doesn't have anything to do with enduring classics, and it's time that. I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd really be surprised about this book. I think he would be shy. He'd be shy about. I it. think he would be shy. He'd be like, "Nahi, kya book kitab kitab kya hai?" You know, people will watch my film if they want to. He would be. I, I think he would be shy. You would read it. <laughs> I don't think so. No chance. No <laughs> chance. You would never read. It. How interesting! And you would just. I'm just one last question before I ask. I would like to ask one question to Imran, who is here. But before that, I want to know: Did you all speak in Urdu at home, or how did you converse? Uh, both Urdu and English. Both. Oh, it depend. It uh, depended on what the subject was. <laughs> and how was his English? <laughs> really depends. So his English, English was good. good. His English was good. His Urdu was better, of course. But he was most comfortable in English. And uh, Mansoor, you are defining the subject. Can you give us some more information? Uh, I want to hear that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to tell you. Uh, but there were certain very colloquial things which can only say, in, you know, Urdu. <coughs> yeah. So we were just used to that. Still... I have to tell you a funny little thing. It was what Nusrat told me. Uh, I had gone to interview uh, Mansoor about his work with, with Madrusa one day, and. Uh, and I said to Nusrat, Nusrat, he's such an honest man. Mansoor will not be able to tell a lie. And then Nusrat said, why do you think we don't give him any secrets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think we try and keep all our secrets hidden from Mansoor. <laughs> I would like to first, I, where is Imran? Is he here? Where is he? Imran, can he get a microphone, please? And it'll be very kind if you can stand up so everyone can see you. Imran, you grew up, obviously you are his uh, grandson. What do you remember? Because there's always a wonderful relationship with, with, with the grandfather. And was he curious about your youth? Because he was so youthful in himself. Uh, strangely, I, I never really saw my grandfather as a filmmaker. To me, he was, he was Nana. He, was, he, he loved telling stories. This, this is actually my most enduring memory of him. Uh, that every evening, and every single evening from the time I was maybe three years old, I, I, I remember he would tell me a new story, and he would make it up as he went along. Uh, generally, I was the star of the stories. So Imran would go here and do this, and then that, and, and everything. Uh, he would weave in bits of adventure stories, science fiction, just all sorts of stuff. Uh, and that, that continued. Uh, he passed away when I was 19. And I, I remember even up till that point, generally in the evenings, I would try and spend a little bit of time with him, go and, go and sit down. And it was always about chatting. It was always, uh, yeah, that, that, that was our relationship. To me, he was, I, I never saw him as a filmmaker until much, much later when I started watching his films. He was just. And did he want you to be an actor? <laughs> Nobody in the family wanted me to work in films. <laughs> that, that, I, think, I think that's how we've always done it. Every tradition, every generation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give him a minutes and we're going to take some questions. Now, first of all, I'd like to say something. Can we absolutely shock the panelist and stick with the subject? Nasir Saab or the book? And I promise you, next time we talk about global warming. <laughs> so now who has the question? Can I mic for her? I see we did family members. Who are the others from the industry you met to do your research? Well, uh, there's Asha ji. I met her a couple of times. I met uh, uh, Jitendra ji. I met uh, Zina Taman. Uh, I met uh, Rishi, Uncle. Rishi Uncle, I met Rishi Ji, I met, uh, and uh, not just uh, people who were, I met Tariq Bhai, uh, uh, I met, uh, so there were a lot of people within the world of uh, Hindi cinema, people who had acted with him, uh, worked with him, 
but also you know this book came out of meeting with people who blog on hindi cinema on, on hindi cinema of the 50s and 60s uh, people who've written on hindi cinema people like jerry pinto uh, uh, anirudha bhattacharji uh, jay arjun singh uh, people i i went to the national film archives of india there was a lot of good material over there on nasir saab and you know there's this particularly uh, uh, honest article that he writes just before baharo ke sapne releases now baharo ke sapne is this film that nasir saab had basically written in his college days in lucknow for which he won a gold medal also uh, as you all know and uh, he, in this in this article he writes very poignantly i think that you know i am at the turning point uh, uh, crossroads in my career where if this film works and this was an off beat film that he was making it was black and white uh, it was being made almost simultaneously as the three months in the film is 1967 and it talks about it's dedicated to the film begins with a, de- a dedication to mahatma gandhi and it it talks about a non violent uh, approach for uh, workers rights against militant trade unionism so you know this this impression that we have of filmmakers that you know ye to sirf commercial filmmaking karta hai and therefore iski koi politics nahi hogi ya ye politics ke bare mein kya baat karega i think that is a great example of a filmmaker who makes ap- films otherwise for the commercial mainstream but also is very politically aware and it's it really is a beautiful film jal mistri won the best cinematography award for that film uh, it's beautifully shot great music great music i mean that is the bahan so uh, national film archives of india and besides that i mean i saw each of nasir saab's films six times at different points I saw I think about 60 70 films right from the outside of Nasir Hussain's films from the 50s 60s 70s just to contextualize what he was doing which was different from what the industry was doing or how it was different um, you know there was a great relationship that uh, Nasir Saab had with Adi Varma and I think it started with PC Manzil so yeah. at that point of time when PC Manzil happened Pancham was not a big music director he was probably just starting off Uh, so how did this collaboration or how did this relationship uh, come uh, I, i don't know if everyone can hear but Sorry. basically uh, he's asked about the relationship between nasir saab and rd burma how did it come about how and it was teesri manzil was when panchem anglo starting out yeah uh, Actually, I only remember one incident uh, from that, and because I was too small at that time. Was I born at that time? Sixty-seven? No, I wasn't born. Sixty-five. Uh, sorry, sixty-five. I was born. Yeah. So I was well, about two years old. But I heard about this incident. Chichan and Chichan had told me about this. That when when Shammi Uncle came into the film, you know, after that entire drama that happened, Shammi Uncle came back into the film. Now, sir, you have to say what the drama was. Some people may not. Drama who are not? Dev Saab was in the film earlier. Then Dev Saab, ha, what drama? Then finally, Shammi Uncle was was you know came into the film. Uh, the first thing Chajan told him because Shammi Uncle was very particular about music. He was very particular. Kya, very film mein music on there hai, music kaise hai, how the songs. So uh, Shammi Uncle asked him ki ye kaun hai ladka hai, Ardi Burman kaun hai, all that. So Chajan said, "Aap uske gaane suno. He made some amazing songs." So of course, Shammi Uncle also trusted. Jajan's judgment on music, uh, but there was a session held at Pali. That's the house we call Pali actually, uh, where Panchem Uncle had come with the harmonium and his entire team, blah blah blah, blah yeho, and he sang all the songs to Shammi Uncle in the drawing room downstairs. And uh, apparently, Shammi Uncle, you know, on hearing each song, was getting so excited that he got up and started dancing, you know. <laughs> while uh, the music session was going on and you know so that was a, like a test for panchem uncle ke once shammi uncle is in the film if shammi uncle really hates the songs then there'll be a you know there might be a rethink of who will compose or whatever but uh, yeah so that was the beginning of panchem uncle's career and uh, that's the only incident it fifth was his fifth film fifth film and yeah. and can um, i just while you're passing the ma- yeah. mic around can i just add also to the point that you i think you were also asking that what leads nasir hussain to bring rd burman on board and i think one of the things that or one of the adjectives we can use for nasir saab without hesitation is that he was remarkably prescient 
uh, he knows in 1957 when he's writing this character, whether it's initially for Dev Saab and then comes to Shami Kapoor, that this modern flamboyant urban hero is going to work with the masses now. You know, this kind of a character is going to gel. So that is one level of prescience. Then there's another uh, 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 level of prescience that he knows, you know, either these are circles that they're all working in together. R.D. Barman was always helping his father out uh, and S.D. Barman was always integral to the Navketan world. So he knows that R.D. in the coming years is going to signify youth culture, which is what happens with Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. It is another level of youth culture. And then with Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak, as Nuzal told me, she said he was dead certain, even though the ending was not sure, that he knew the time is right for a love story. Because the films of the late 80s are violent. They are about vendetta, they are about revenge. So he, he was clear that I want to do a love story. Just to say that uh, actually QSQT, uh, <laughs> though dad later on became nervous about the tragic end, I have to say that uh, the, the way the story came about was, because this was a conversation that I had with him, um, was th uh, that we were thinking of a story that was a tragic ending. Right. So, like a, uh, Romeo and Juliet, was right. a, so a classic. We, exactly. So we, we started out from that right. point. I also think that, I may be talking nonsense, but the people who worked with O.P. Nair moved on to R.D. Berman. Correct. There's a connection there in terms right. of the youthful absolutely. tunes. The beat. Uh, and a lot of foreign world music. Yes, there's a lady here. Just one minute. Uh, one second. We'll come to you. Yes. Woodhouse. Yes. Yeah, he was very influenced by P.G. Woodhouse or Arthur Christie, you're right. Uh, the title having multiple meanings, like, this is the first time I've seen P.G. Mandel, but all his other movies, the P.G. Mandel he explains is the third uh, step of love. He, it's also the third uh, floor from which the girl jumps. Yes. Even Agatha Christie's books, uh, the titles are referenced within the books. And they have multiple meanings. They not only mean like what's going to happen, but also how the person is feeling. Yes, yes, yes he did. He was he, he did read pop pop uh, popular books. Yeah. There was a question over here. There's a gentleman with a berry. <laughs> Uh, Did everybody here at the back? No. What are the things that I've learned from Tishiram, some important things while I was assistant? You know, I think one of the things that I remember him saying, uh, in fact, he and Abhijan would both say that, and that's probably my biggest lesson. He said, whenever someone came to pitch a story to them, or a script to them, at the end of the narration, they would tell the writer or director, tell me your story in one line. एक लाइन में अपनी कहानी बताइए क्या? अगर आप एक लाइन में नहीं बता सकते तो गड़बड़। What he was actually saying, which today you know, if you read books on screenplay writing, he was asking me what he was asking what is the premise of your film, which comes in one line. So that's one big take home from me, for me. And and I think the other is I remember him saying once के you know, actor को scene समझ के करना चाहिए। You need to understand इसका वजन क्या है, what is the scene trying to say. So actually there are many things that I picked up you know, all along because I spent four years with him and I was with him during uh, the shoot, during post-production, during the edit, right through. And for, the music, for the music sessions also. Yeah. Do you have any particular song that you have to do with your own? All the songs are very wonderful, but I don't know how many people know uh, that song. You have seen me, that song is the song. That time, uh, Jamie Uncle went through a tragedy because he lost uh, Gita Ji at that time. And that set was up in Mehbu. And uh, I remember Jashan saying that when Shami Uncle lost Gita Ji, he was distraught. He was like really sad and he was really distraught. And, uh, of course, they didn't shoot and Jashan told Shami Uncle that whenever you want to shoot, let me. Uh, and I think a few months later, Shami Uncle called him up and said that, Okay, let's continue the shoot. And uh, Jashan had not 
broke it on the set. He had kept it standing. You know. And the song that you see in the film is the first thing that Shammi Uncle shot for. The first sh shooting that Shammi Uncle did after Gita Ji passed away was that song. Tumne mujhe dekha, ho kar mahir ba. He had a very sad expression. It comes across, I think. Yeah, so I that was the first thing he shot for after she had passed away. There's a gentleman here, and then anybody else, can you put your hands up so yeah. I can identify you? Yeah. Where? Yeah, yeah, that's the end. Right at the back. All right, right at the back. Okay. Okay, so after we come sure. to you. Sure. I think you can just ask, we will repeat. <clears throat> the a short one. Well, I, th I don't think there was any reason because he and, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, they were both very fond of each other because whenever I was with Jishan and we would bump into Goldie Uncle, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they just, you know, in, in films what happens is that you have to realize that we are like gypsies. We do a film together and when we are doing the film, the whole team that's working together, the actors, the crew, we are living out of each other's pockets. You know, you meet a person and within three days you're like telling him your heartbreak story and all of that. So we get used to a life where you take very little time to come close to a person. And then six months later or one year later, we pick up our tents and go on somewhere else. I move on to some other film, you know, my other actors move on to some other film. Then we meet after five years, ten years. Why are we not working together again? Hota hai, chance hota hai, nahi hota hai. So I think both uh, Goldie Uncle and Nasa Sahib had great fondness for each other and they, were, they had high respect and regard for each other. Uh, I think what Jashan wrote in Tisri Manzil, uh, Shum, uh, Goldie Uncle brought out beautifully. I mean, the song picturizations in Tisri Manzil are outstanding. Uh, so, there's no real reason why they didn't work together. I think Goldie Uncle was doing his own thing. Uh, the same, the same could actually, in fact, this was a question I asked them that, you know, we could ask the same question of why didn't Nasir Hussain, uh, Nasir Saab work with Salim Javed also after Yadu Ki Barat and there's no reason. It's it's just, that film was, I mean, I think that that is Nasir Hussain's best film because he balances the Salim Javed world with his own sensibility. It's a big, big yeah. hit. I and remember one incident of that, uh, which is to do with writing because Salim Javed came to Chajan one day and said, Chajan, we have a problem hai. Hum ek aur film rikh hai. Jiski kahani same hai. <laughs> so he said, Konsi Gandhi? Konsi film? Hai? He said, Kiwo film ka name is Zanjir. Prakash Meraji banana hai. Or Zanjir joe, uski kahani, or Yadu ki baraki kahani, identical. Hai. It's a revenge story. So Chizan mega, so na hi kya kahani hai. So they had obviously written Zanjir and they narrated the script of Zanjir to Nasa. So this is what he had told me. So he said, ke, I heard the script and I said, Ke, aap bilkul befikar rahi hai. ये दो टोटली अलग फिल्म है क्योंकि मैं जो फिल्म बना रहा हूं वो उसमें म्यूजिक विल प्ले सच एन इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एंड ही वाज सो राइट इफ यू लुक एट जंजीर टुडे एंड यू लुक एट यादव की बारात दे आर टोटली देयर इज नो सिमिलरिटी दैट यू कैन सी बिटवीन द टू व्हेन व्हेन द स्टोरी इज द सेम स्टोरी वही है कि वो अपना बदला देता है and and he balances that world. So the point is that the Dharmendra character is like the Amitabh Bachchan character in Zanjeer, which is why Dharamji doesn't have one song in the film. It's very dry. And I think Mansoor said this that his integrity would have been compromised if he had given Dharamji a song to sing. You remember you said this to me. Whereas he brings in his own sensibility through the romantic musician characters, which is Vijay Aroda and uh, Tariq Bhai. No, as so, a key thing, how do the brothers come back through the song? song? Yeah, don't they remember that song. Yeah. So music plays such an integral part of his uh, And story. you might also say that, you know, oh, you know, again this lionizing. But Zanjir mein usko wo, wo, hoda hai, wo, horse. But isme, it's the song that brings them back. So it's you know I have to just say a little aside, I don't know who found the title of Yadu Ki Bharat. I was with someone yesterday and they said it's the name of the autobiography of the Josh. Urdu poet Josh. Josh. And he called it Yadu Ki Josh Bharat. Josh Maliabadi's uh, autobiography. In fact, Salim I think there's a gentleman right yeah. at the back who has been waiting a long time. Good evening, everyone. Adab. 
Bhai Adam. Uh, Mr. Amir Khan sahab, this question is for you. Your senior generation wasn't very supportive of you. I mean, they didn't really encourage you when you want to join films. My senior generation, I, matlab, you're talking of Chajan and Bajan. That's right, uh-huh. that's right. Your father and your uncle. Yeah, yeah. Now, similarly, when Imran decided to get into films, how supportive were you with Imran? I produced a film for him. <laughs> that's right. So, because Imran just mentioned that nobody from his family was supportive, but you did produce a film for him. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I think he was joking. Uh, <laughs> when Imran said he wanted to act, I mean, I was very happy about it. And in fact, at that time, Jammu Sukhan was producing it. And yeah, so I was not producing it. it was Jammu Sukhan producing it and uh, Apna, Abbas was writing and directing it. And I knew that Imran is interested in acting and he's going, I always like to leave people alone. I don't want to start interfering in Imran's life or in anyone's life, you know. So I knew he was doing something. And uh, whenever he needed my help or something, I knew I knew that he would come to me. And if he didn't need my help, he wouldn't. So as it so happened, when he came and told me that you know I, we are having trouble with that film, and perhaps Jamuji is you know not in a position to make the film at this point of time. Uh, so that's when I uh, you know I first asked Jamuji, okay, are you making the film or not making? And he said, can I am I not going to make If you want to take over, you can. So I heard the script. I like the script, and. Uh, we did a screen test, we did about six, seven scenes, uh, and uh, did the casting. And you know, so, I mean, if I was not supportive of him being an actor, I wouldn't have mm-hmm. gone ahead with that. I, there's another question there, yes, and then we come to you. <coughs> but all of us in our family are very obstinate. We don't have to worry about it. What do we think about our elders? What do we think about our youngsters? I don't know. My kids don't agree with me half the time. My question is to you. Sir, my so my name is Krutarth Desai Hi. and I am a big, big, big fan of yours. Thank you. I am a very big, big superstar. Thank you. So sir, inspiring from, getting inspired from you, I have a vision that I want to start a production of Kiddy Productions. Oh, are we so, talking about Nasi, sir? Yes, sir. One thing is that, sir, you have a lifespan in your lifespan. You have a message that I can carry with my entire career. It's like, you have learned your secrets. Strictly speaking, this is not about Nasi, sir. No, it isn't about Nasi, sir. At all. I think you will have to... And what advice do you have to give? You will do good. Uh, there is a yes. Follow your heart. And uh, where is the lady? We Follow your heart. Lady, uh, okay, we'll go with him. A quick question, and then go to the lady. Yeah. This is for writer. Uh, Akshay, you lived this book. Sometimes you got some idea, right? So my question: When you did research, when you meet with the people concerned, and the entire family, Amir, uh, sir, and madam, and the rest of the people. So did you live that particular character? Because see. This is about the golden era of Indian cinema, right? Yeah, what's your question? So, did you yourself, while writing, uh, live that kind of journey? Yeah. yeah, okay, you got it. No, I, I don't think it was, you know, it's not like, you know, like their, their dad was writing a character and therefore he was trying to, you know, portray someone on screen. No, I think writing a film biography is a very different experience where I always say this that it's and I think maybe you can relate to that that you know it's it's a little kind of you have to be uh, the right word from the song is you have to be a little crazy a little divana because uh, you know you are in, in your own world you're making these own theories I don't know how many of these theories which are there in this book people are going to buy into it my wife keeps telling me Ye tumne apna hi, you know kuch bun liya hai and lik diya hai and all uh, but you know you do it because you're you're very passionate about the subject and you know this book has taken 31 months of my life uh, it's hard work I would also say that first comes the films if the films work the book comes there's a lady over there hello everyone Ashun for Amir Khan how do we portray modern women in Indian movies like what is your definition oh, no, no, of that's modernity let's talk about Nasir Saab's women yeah, that would I be mean, much more the point. Can you take Yeah, yeah like why directing yes. or how do you usually portray a modern woman? What is the definition? Uh, uh, someone who's independent, someone who has her own mind. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, okay. Not uh, through like uh, if you portray, if you just show them drinking or smoking, I don't think so. That is a concept of being no, modern. No, I, I think you might have misunderstood what I was saying earlier. Uh, a, a woman who's independent enough to decide what she wants to do and she doesn't need to take permission from anyone. No, sir. So, when she does things like having uh, alcohol or cigarettes, she's not seeking anyone's permission to do that. Independent woman. Okay, there's a she may be doing other things also. 
Yes, I'll just give it as an example. Uh, can you just stand up and ask? We've got two more time for two more questions. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether he said much to me. No, he didn't. No, he, he didn't give me any inspirational words. Yeah, he didn't come to set. Jajan, uh, in the entire shooting of Kayamal Sir Kayamal he never came on set except for one scene. The only scene he came to set for was the interval scene. Uh, but otherwise he was not on set, so he, he didn't really mu say much to me. Uh, he kind of, he, he left us to it, yeah, he left us to it. But it's interesting that it's interval but because he would, it's he would, he would give me one, he would say one thing to me repeatedly. Okay, happy endings are shoot karna. <laughs> So that was a constant refrain that he had to so why and, you did, okay on and you didn't shoot it. We, we shot both ends. Yeah. We didn't even edit it. Okay, there was an, uh, well, the gentleman very enthusiastic here. I am a big uh, Nasir Saab fan. Uh, his last two films, although I have seen both of them, Zabardasta and Manzil, uh, Manzil, Manzil, five, six times and I love them. But they were not as successful. Uh, in fact, they were not successful. They were not successful. Yeah, so, but uh, great music also. So, was he, how did he take failure when he was consistently a successful filmmaker? And even Zamane Ko Dikana did well, but not as not that uh, well. Yeah, so, how did he take failure? I think all, all three of us have a different point of views, perhaps. Oh, you, 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 you. Yeah, um, because actually those two films came much later. I mean, they came later. Uh, Zamane Ko Dikana was the first film which actually delivered a shock to him. And I can say that because I didn't spend as much time maybe as, as Avan did with him, but that, that phase I was spending time with him. And I remember going to the, my, my dad used to go first day, first show and see the movie, you know. He had a lot of courage, I can't do that. Uh, so he used to go and he wanted to know, feel what the audience was like. First, first time, yeah. And uh, I remember going there with him and I remember uh, the film was going brilliantly you know, throughout. Like in the beginning, it's entertainment, music, the audience was totally with the film. And suddenly something would go wrong, went wrong. Last four years. In the last, yes, pre-climax, you know. And the audience was suddenly out of it. And we came out and we were driving back and I could see he was shattered. <coughs> and he took it very bad, actually. <coughs> because uh, I think one was that he had got used to He had never seen movie. failure. He had never seen it, actually. Right? He had never seen failure in his entire career. So yeah, he, he didn't take it well. Uh, Even I remember that uh, that he was quite depressed and he was he was he was really mo mourning the the fact that the film had not worked. I, I remember that. And he had one question of me, you know, because uh, when the trials used to happen, uh, uh, the first trial, second, third, fourth, and I used to go for them. Uh, the audience used to enjoy it a lot. You know, all the people who were called. So it was going from strength to strength to strength. And then maybe on the fifth trial, when we got into the car, I told him, Daddy, it's not working. He says, what do you mean it's not working? Everybody else likes it. So I said, I don't know, it's just not working. And I couldn't pin it, what it was that made me feel it was not working. But much later, I was able to analyze you know, why it didn't work. And I feel, if I have to share that with you, uh, because he asked me that, that day when we went back, maybe two, th two, three days later, because he went into a bit of a shock. About a week later, he asked me, you know, he said, you were the only guy who used to say that it's not working. So what was your reason for it? And I was forced to think of the reason. And then sort of it occurred to me, I said, you know what? The film starts about this, the hero trying to prove to his father that, he's, that he can do something. And the moment he gets into the car, he sees a pretty girl and then he keeps wooing her for the next, you know, 80% of the film. And now you want to come back to the story you know, and tell me, oh, actually, this was the story. So he, he, he did uh, take it badly and he... Uh,